Drugs make the world go round for some of the most notorious individuals on the planet. We're talking about the biggest drug lords and cartel leaders who gathered unbelievable amounts of wealth by feeding the addiction of millions across the globe. They made sure that this destructive disease stays alive, and throughout their truly abominable acts, they sat comfortably in the luxury of their multi-million dollar mansions. We will take you inside the homes of the biggest cartel leaders. Get ready to see the lavish mansions and escape houses built on drug money. Pablo Escobar Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, commonly known as Pablo Escobar, was a Colombian drug lord who rose to become one of the most notorious and powerful criminals in history. Born on December 1, 1949 in Rio Negro, Colombia, Escobar's journey from a humble background to becoming the leader of the infamous Medellin cartel is a tale of ambition, ruthlessness, and audacity. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, he controlled a vast empire that dominated the global cocaine trade, amassing immense wealth and influence. Escobar's name became synonymous with violence, corruption, and the dark side of the drug trade. He's remembered for orchestrating a wave of bloodshed and terror in Colombia, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. Yet he also earned a reputation as a charismatic figure, often portraying himself as a Robin Hood-like character, claiming to be a champion of the poor and investing in social projects to gain support from the public. His life and criminal activities remain the subject of numerous books, documentaries, and movies, making him an enduring icon of the dark side of the drug trade. He was able to gather copious amounts of wealth in a short period of time. Escobar was known for his extravagant lifestyle. He had multiple grand mansions in many locations. His most famous residence was the Hacienda Napolis, located in Puerto Triunfo, Colombia. Hacienda Napolis was an enormous estate covering approximately 7,500 acres of lush Colombian countryside. It was situated in the Magdalena Medio region, about 150 miles northwest of Bogota. The estate featured a diverse landscape, including rolling hills, dense forests, and multiple bodies of water. The main house at Hacienda Napolis was a luxurious mansion where Escobar and his family lived. The interior featured lavish furnishings, artwork, and comfortable living spaces for Escobar and his family. The most famous features of Hacienda Napolis was Escobar's private zoo, which housed a vast collection of exotic animals. He imported animals from all over the world, including elephants, giraffes, hippos, and various big cats. The estate had several swimming pools, including an Olympic-sized pool. In addition to the pools, Hacienda Napolis Poles also had its private water park, complete with slides and other attractions. To facilitate his drug trafficking operations, Escobar had a private landing strip on the estate. This allowed him to transport drugs and move quickly to various locations. It was rumored that Hacienda Napoles had hidden compartments and tunnels used to stash drugs and evade authorities during raids. After Escobar's death in 1993 and the dismantling of his drug empire, Hacienda Napoles fell into disrepair and was abandoned for many years. In the late 2000s, the Colombian government turned it into a theme park, allowing visitors to tour the estate and see the remnants of Escobar's lavish lifestyle, including the remains of the zoo and some of the buildings. Pablo Escobar's Miami property was an extravagant mansion located in Miami Beach, Florida. It was one of the drug lord's most well-known and luxurious properties during his heyday in the 1980s. The mansion was situated in the upscale neighborhood of Miami Beach. The location provided stunning views of the Atlantic Ocean and easy access to the vibrant Miami nightlife and entertainment in 1980, just a year after acquiring Hacienda Napoles, Pablo Escobar made this significant purchase, acquiring the lavish pastel pink mansion in Miami, spanning 7,336 square feet, all for the price of $765,500. This flashy villa, boasting four bedrooms and six bathrooms, is believed to have primarily served as a secure cocaine drop safe house for Escobar's henchmen and associates. The interior of the pink mansion exuded opulence and luxury. The mansion is said to have had multiple lavish living rooms adorned with elegant furnishings, expensive artwork, and luxurious carpets. High ceilings and large windows added to the sense of grandeur and allowed natural light to fill the rooms. The property was a haven of amenities and entertainment options. It featured a large swimming pool surrounded by lush gardens and palm trees. There was a rooftop terrace offering panoramic views of Miami Beach and the ocean. In 1990, the Miami mansion once owned by Pablo Escobar found a new owner and local lawyer Roger Schindler, who paid nine $915,000 to acquire the property. Over the years, the mansion changed hands again, and in 2014, it was purchased by Christian de Berdoir, the proprietor of the Chicken Kitchen restaurant chain, for a substantial sum of just under $9.7 million. Upon learning about the mansion's infamous past and its connections to the notorious drug lord Pablo Escobar, Christian de Berdoir decided to demolish the mansion, erasing its associations with the dark history of drug trafficking. However, before proceeding with the demolition, an extensive 
extensive search of the property was carried out, possibly to uncover any hidden remnants or secrets that might have been connected to Escobar's past activities. No hidden treasure was discovered except a safe which also yielded nothing. After the unsuccessful search, de Berdoir initially intended to construct a modern home on the land. However, a change of plans led him to decide against building on the plot. Instead, he opted to sell it. In 2020, the property found a new buyer, who acquired it for just under $11 million. The property's infamy and its connection to Pablo Escobar have contributed to its enduring legacy as one of the most iconic and intriguing landmarks in Miami Beach. The list of Escobar's homes doesn't end here. Pablo Escobar's La Manuela Retreat, also known as Hacienda Napoles II, was a lavish and secluded property located near Guatape, Antioquia, Colombia. It served as one of the drug lord's private hideaways, offering him a respite from the pressures of his criminal empire and the outside world. In the face of intensifying law enforcement pressure, Pablo Escobar made a strategic move in 1984 by acquiring this breathtaking and secluded holiday home. The purpose behind this acquisition was to celebrate the birth of his daughter, Manuela. In honor of her arrival, he named the vast 20-acre estate La Manuela. It was rumored to have double-layered walls, allowing Escobar to stash away large quantities of cocaine and cash in hidden compartments. As expected of a notorious drug baron, the estate was adorned with extravagant amenities befitting his status. Among its highlights was an alluring swimming pool, providing a tranquil oasis amidst the lush surroundings. Additionally, the property featured a private nightclub, offering an exclusive escape for Escobar and his inner circle. The vast grounds also boasted a guesthouse to accommodate VIP visitors, a seaplane dock to facilitate discreet travel, and recreational facilities such as tennis courts and a football field, which conveniently doubled as a heliport. In 1993, a mere eight months before Pablo Escobar's death, this cherished holiday home suffered a devastating attack. A bomb, meticulously planted by the vigilante death squad known as Los Pepes, tore through the property. The daring assassination plot aimed to eliminate the powerful cartel boss once and for all. However, Escobar had received a warning about the impending danger, enabling him to flee the premises long before the explosive device was triggered. The bomb's detonation left the once tranquil estate in ruins, a stark reminder of the ruthless and relentless pursuit of Escobar by those seeking to bring him down. After evading law enforcement, Pablo Escobar's next major property acquisition was a discreet and secluded hideaway in the resort town of Tulum, Mexico. This hidden gem provided the perfect sanctuary for the notorious drug lord, shielded from prying eyes and potential threats. Surrounded by lush tropical foliage, the property offered a tranquil and idyllic setting, ideal for someone seeking to escape the clutches of justice. The high-end hideout was equipped with bulletproof walls, ensuring maximum security for the elusive cartel leader. However, following Escobar's death, the Paradise property fell into neglect. It remained virtually abandoned until 2012, when it caught the eye of New York art dealer Leo Malka. Recognizing its potential, the avid art collector seized the opportunity and acquired the estate, envisioning a grand transformation. Determined to restore the property to its former glory, Leo Malka embarked on a spectacular renovation project, sparing no expense to create a lavish and exclusive five-star art hotel. The transformation breathed new life into the once forgotten property, elevating it to a luxurious haven that combined art, culture, and unparalleled hospitality. In 2015, the Casa Malca, with its 71 rooms, opened its doors to guests and quickly gained popularity as one of Mexico's most luxurious and exclusive hotels. The resort prides itself on offering exceptional privacy to its guests, making it a sought-after destination for those seeking a truly secluded and opulent escape. Today, the Casa Malca stands as a testament to the property's intriguing history, now transformed into a luxurious retreat where guests can indulge in the finest accommodations and amenities while relishing the unmatched beauty of Tulum's natural surroundings. Undoubtedly, the most captivating feature of the hotel is its secret underground swimming pool, ingeniously concealed beneath the main outdoor pool. This hidden oasis adds an air of mystery to the property, drawing visitors into its enigmatic depths. The intriguing allure of the underground pool is amplified by the rumors surrounding its history. It is said that Pablo Escobar may have used this clandestine space to stash vast amounts of illicit drug money hidden away from the prying eyes of authorities. The exact contents of this secretive underground chamber remain a mystery, leaving one to wonder what other treasures or secrets may lie beneath the surface. He owned multiple other secure buildings and mansions to seek refuge in times of trouble. Pablo Escobar's Monaco Tower, also known as Edificio Monaco, was an eight-story building located in the upscale neighborhood of El Poblado in Medellin, Colombia. The El Poblado district was a wealthy and exclusive area known for its upscale residences and commercial establishments. The tower enjoyed panoramic views of the city and surrounding mountains, making it an attractive location for luxurious living. The Monaco Tower was a modern and stylish 
building, standing tall amidst the Medellin skyline. While there were no extravagant architectural features on the exterior, the building boasted a sleek and contemporary design, fitting in well with its upscale surroundings. In the late 1980s, Pablo Escobar and his family moved into a luxurious penthouse, one of 12 apartments within the building. This plush residence offered ample living space and boasted impressive amenities, including two swimming pools and a tennis court. However, amidst the opulence, the penthouse also concealed secrets essential for Escobar's safety and criminal operations. The building featured a secret panic room, providing a hidden sanctuary where Escobar and his family could take shelter during emergencies. Additionally, a covert vault was ingeniously concealed to store drugs, weapons, and large sums of cash, further facilitating his illegal empire. Deep in the basement, a vast garage provided a secure space for Escobar's prized collection of vintage cars and motorcycles, displaying the drug lord's extravagant taste even in his choice of transportation. The tranquility of the penthouse was shattered on January 13, 1988, when a bomb planted by the rival Cali cartel exploded, causing severe damage to the building. The Cali cartel had targeted Escobar and his family in a desperate bid to eliminate their fierce competitor. Although Escobar and his family miraculously survived the attack, three people lost their lives and ten others suffered injuries. Escobar's daughter, Manuela, experienced hearing loss due to the explosion. This brutal attack was a pivotal moment in the escalating conflict between the rival cartels, igniting a bloody and protracted war that would rage from 1988 until Escobar's eventual death in 1993. The penthouse, once a symbol of opulence and power, became a haunting reminder of the violent and tumultuous era of the Colombian drug trade. After Pablo Escobar's death in 1993, the Monaco Tower fell into disrepair and became a symbol of his violent reign. In 2019, the Colombian government finally decided to demolish the building as part of a project to transform the site into a park to honor the victims of the drug trade and to promote reconciliation. The Monaco Tower, once a symbol of opulence and power, is now a significant part of Colombia's history, serving as a reminder of the turbulent and violent era of the drug cartel wars in the country. Its demolition marked the end of an era and a step towards healing and rebuilding for Medellin and its people. El Chapo El Chapo, whose real name is Joaquin Archivaldo Guzman Loera, is one of the most infamous and elusive drug lords in modern history. Born on April 4, 1957 in Sinaloa, Mexico, El Chapo rose from humble beginnings to become the leader of the Sinaloa Cartel, one of the most powerful and notorious drug trafficking organizations in the world. With his cunning and ruthlessness, he became a central figure in the global drug trade, orchestrating the smuggling of vast amounts of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine into the United States and other countries. Throughout his criminal career, El Chapo earned a reputation for his ability to evade capture and escape from high-security prisons, further cementing his status as a mythical figure in the criminal underworld. He became a symbol of the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies in their efforts to dismantle drug cartels and bring their leaders to justice. El Chapo's life and exploits have inspired countless books, movies, and documentaries, making him a subject of fascination and intrigue worldwide. The notorious drug lord gathered an unbelievable amount of wealth and lived a lavish lifestyle. He had several luxurious mansions fitted with multiple escape mechanisms and robust security. Let's take a look at this Mexican drug lord's homes. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman had two notable homes in the state of Sinaloa. The first residence was located in Los Mocos, a city in northern Sinaloa, where Guzman spent his final days before being apprehended by Mexican Marines and later extradited to the United States. The second home was in Culiacan, the capital of Sinaloa, and it served as a safe house, featuring intricate escape tunnels to ensure his security and evade capture. Despite heading a vast drug trafficking operation estimated to be worth $12.6 billion, El Chapo's residences were surprisingly modest. The houses lacked the opulence one might expect from a global drug kingpin, appearing relatively simple and unassuming. Nevertheless, these properties played crucial roles in his activities, acting as both a base of operations and a means of evading authorities until his eventual capture and extradition. The previously owned by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman remains abandoned, while the second residence, the Culican home, found a new owner through the Mexican National Lottery. However, the lucky winner chose to remain anonymous, fearing potential repercussions from the cartel. The first home, the Los Mocos home, is a two-story house with three bedrooms, and the living area is situated on the second floor. The property also includes a large room with a walk-in closet featuring glass walls. When the authorities entered the home, they found that inside all the bedrooms, there were beds present. Among them, the room on the first floor is suspected to have been El Chapo's own bedroom, primarily 
primarily due to its proximity to the walk-in closet that had a secret entrance. Both homes have taken on different fates, one lying dormant and the other now belonging to a lucky lottery winner, but veiled in secrecy for safety concerns. Despite the Mexican government's efforts, they were unable to find a buyer for the most expensive property purchased by El Chapo for Griselda Lopez, the mother of his son Ovidio Guzman Lopez. This extravagant three-story house is estimated to be worth $587,000 and boasts several bedrooms along with an inviting outdoor backyard pool. Despite its luxurious features and prime location, the property remained unsold, perhaps due to its association with the infamous drug, Lord and the ongoing legal complexities surrounding his family. If you thought that one of the biggest cartel leaders would have only two modest-looking homes, what you're about to hear will shock you. According to a prosecution witness at Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's trial in New York, the former drug lord was incredibly wealthy, owning properties at numerous beaches and ranches in every state. The witness, Miguel Angel Martinez, a former pilot for the Sinaloa cartel and a close associate of Guzman, testified that Chapo's opulent lifestyle was funded by a cocaine boom in the early 1990s. Guzman's wealth afforded him extravagant indulgences, including a private zoo with the big cats, a trip to Switzerland for an anti-aging treatment, a gambling in Macau, private jets and lavish gifts. Additionally, the court heard that Guzman maintained a lifestyle of luxury, supported by the company of four to five women. The testimony provided a glimpse into the excesses and indulgences enjoyed by El Chapo, painting a vivid picture of the immense wealth he accumulated during his reign as a powerful drug lord. According to Miguel Angel Martinez's testimony, a lavish mansion worth $10 million in the Pacific Coast Resort city of Acapulco was part of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's extravagant properties. This opulent residence boasted various amenities, including swimming pools and a tennis court. What made it particularly remarkable was the private zoo, complete with a little train that allowed Guzman and his guests to tour the premises and observe lions, tigers, and panthers. In addition to the luxurious mansion, Guzman also owned a yacht named Chapito, which was docked nearby, further symbolizing his immense wealth and extravagant lifestyle. These details revealed a glimpse into the excessive and extravagant world of El Chapo, showcasing the vast resources at his disposal during his time as a powerful drug lord. It's not just El Chapo who had a lavish lifestyle. His son, Ovidio Guzman, too enjoyed a luxury-laden life until his house was raided and he was captured by the Mexican military. Ovidio Guzman Lopez is one of the four children born to El Chapo and his second wife, Griselda Guadalupe Lopez. Ovidio was born in the year 1990 in the town of Badiraguato, a place with historical significance in the context of the drug trade in Mexico. During his school days, Ovidio Guzman Lopez acquired two nicknames, El Raton and El Nuevo Raton, meaning the new mouse. These monikers were attributed to him by his peers. In 2008, Ovidio's older brother, Edgar Guzman Lopez, was shot dead. Following this event, both Ovidio and his brother Joaquin Guzman Lopez inherited a share in their father's sprawling and notorious global narco-trafficking empire, as confirmed by the U.S. State Department. This inheritance meant that Ovidio became entangled in the family's drug-related activities, further perpetuating their controversial legacy in the world of organized crime. After the military raid in January 2023, the scene was one of utter chaos and destruction. The living room, once adorned with high-end minimalist furniture crafted from luxurious mahogany and marble, now lay in disarray. Two elegant white couches were upturned and marred with dark stains of blood. The striking panoramic window, once offering breathtaking views of the lush Sinaloan mountains, had been reduced to a jagged hole in the wall, surrounded by shattered glass. The youngest Guzman's extravagant residence is situated on a hill in the small town of Jesus Maria, approximately 40 minutes away from Culiacan, the capital city of Sinaloa. Culiacan holds significant historical importance as the birthplace of the notorious Sinaloa cartel, which shares its name with the region. Guzman's opulent home is perched in this serene location, surrounded by the natural beauty of the Sinaloan landscape. Similar to his infamous father, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman also had an escape tunnel concealed within his luxurious residence. This secret tunnel extended from the inner parking lot in the backyard to the exterior of the compound. Ingeniously camouflaged, the entrance to the tunnel seamlessly blended with the cement floor, ensuring a discreet means of departure in times of danger. El Chapo and his wife possessed two armored vehicles, an elegant white GLE Mercedes-Benz and a sleek black G-Wagon, providing them with added security and protection during their travels. Inside the lavish mansion, the four main rooms boasted impressive features. One of the rooms boasted a large circular bathtub, offering a luxurious and relaxing experience. Another room contained a walk-in closet, impressively spacious, rivaling the size of a regular bedroom. The kitchen was equipped with state-of-the-art appliances, embodying modern convenience and elegance. Outside, a sprawling backyard welcomed visitors with a life-size nativity scene set peacefully under the shelter of palm 
palm-lined roofs, this picturesque scene added a touch of serenity to the opulent residence, where luxury and discretion went hand in hand. El Chapo and his family had several other homes and escape routes which are probably still not fully uncovered. While the former drug lord is imprisoned for life, many of his family members and close allies are still living the secret life of luxury, fearful of the day when they too will be captured and put behind bars. El Mencho El Mencho, whose real name is Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, is one of the most notorious and elusive drug lords in modern history. Born in 1966 in the Mikoacan state of Mexico, El Mencho rose to power as the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, abbreviated as CJNG, a ruthless and powerful criminal organization involved in drug trafficking, arm smuggling, and other illicit activities. Known for his brutal tactics and ability to evade capture, El Mencho has become a key figure in Mexico's ongoing drug war and has been declared one of the most wanted criminals by both Mexican and United States authorities. With a vast network spanning various countries, including the United States, El Mencho and his cartel have been responsible for a significant share of drug-related violence and corruption in the region. His elusive nature and the wide-reaching impact of his criminal empire have made him a central figure in the ever-evolving landscape of organized crime in Mexico and beyond. The man is said to have unimaginable amounts of money, and he surely splurges on luxurious mansions that have unique safety and escape features to stay away away from authorities grasp. He's known to be constantly on the run, so authorities are having a hard time finding out about his various hideouts and homes. Let's take a look at what we do know. In the past, El Mencho may have enjoyed a more relaxed lifestyle and indulged in his unlawfully acquired wealth, occasionally venturing into urban areas. However, as he ascended to become one of the most wanted drug kingpins by both the Mexican and United States governments, his circumstances changed dramatically. Now he must constantly seek refuge in various hidden locations to evade capture. As authorities in intensify their search for El Mencho, they have managed to uncover a few properties used by the leader of the notorious Jalisco New Generation Cartel, infamously known as CJNG, as temporary hideouts. These hidden places serve as crucial shelters for him to evade arrest and continue orchestrating the cartel's illicit activities. The rural ranches where El Mencho was supposedly hiding proved to be suitable hideouts, providing a pleasant stay for Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes and his criminal associates. One of the most significant properties seized by the authorities was Rancho La Esperanza in Tonala, belonging to Jose Luis Gutierrez Valencia, also known as Don Chelo, who happens to be the father-in-law of El Mencho. This ranch served as a base for keeping several exotic animals, including a Bengal tiger, a Harris hawk, a yellow-breasted toucan, two other members of the hawk family known as crested caracaras, and three green macaws. During the search of the cartel leader's ranch, the authorities also discovered six 9mm pistols, two of which were gold-plated. One of the pistols featured an image of San Judas Tadeo, while another was adorned with precious stones and bore the logo of a skull and a Ferrari, adding a sense of opulence to the weaponry. These findings exemplify the luxurious and well-equipped lifestyle that El Mencho and his criminal associates enjoyed while hiding in the secluded ranches, further highlighting the complexity of dismantling his criminal enterprise. This shows that even while being on the run, the fugitive drug lord likes to live comfortably in the lap of luxury. And it's not just his hideouts and homes, he even likes to get special treatment for his medical issues. Mexican authorities have discovered a hospital in the community of El Alcihuatl, located in the state of Jalisco, allegedly constructed by Nemesio Osehuera Cervantes. The hospital is nestled in a wooded area amid a cluster of houses and dirt roads. This hospital was specifically built to cater to El Mencho, who is believed to suffer from kidney disease, allowing him to receive necessary medical treatment while minimizing the risk of capture by law enforcement. The secluded and well-equipped medical facility provides a safe haven for the cartel boss to address his health concerns concerns away from prying eyes and potential threats. Located just about 50 kilometers away from Villa Purification, a significant stronghold of the CJNG, the clinic strategically positions itself to serve the cartel leader and his associates while being accessible to the local community. In an effort to win the trust and support of the residents, El Mencho has reportedly provided economic assistance and essential supplies and collaborated on various community development projects in the area. This discovery highlights the reach and influence of the CJNG and its leader who goes to great lengths to secure loyalty from both his inner circle and the local population. The well-equipped and concealed health center not only serves as a sanctuary for El Mencho's medical needs, but also acts as a means to solidify the cartel's grip on the region. This discovery sheds light on the lengths to which criminal organizations like the CJNG go to safeguard their leaders and maintain their operations. El Mencho is called the most intelligent cartel leader by some of the top narco cops, and it is feared that he may never be caught. We surely hope that's not the case. Until then, 
the dangerous cartel leader, El Mencho, will continue to enjoy a life of luxury in his opulent hideouts and mansions that he buys on drug money. What does all that luxury mean when the notorious cartel leader holds the dubious distinction of being the most wanted individual in Mexico and one of the most wanted figures in the United States? In a relentless pursuit to bring him to justice, both the Mexican and U.S. governments have put substantial bounties on his head, offering up to Mexican $30 million and U.S. $10 million, respectively, for any valuable information leading to his arrest. The charges against El Mencho are grave, as he is wanted for his involvement in drug trafficking, being a key player in organized crime activities, and also for possessing firearms without proper documentation. His criminal operations with the Jalisco Cartel New Generation have caused widespread violence and corruption, making him a priority target for law enforcement agencies on both sides of the border. The sizable rewards offered for his capture underscore the significance of his role in the global drug trade and the determination to dismantle his criminal empire. It's shocking to see that some people are okay with trading their peace of mind for a wealthy life that is built on other people's addictions. Not shocked enough? Click on one of the cards on your screens to watch more.